Okay, so in this mini lecture, we are going to look at why making sure we understand the idea of net force is important as we apply the principles of Newton's second law. So let's first just remind ourselves what Newton's second law tells us. It tells us that the sum of the forces, the net force acting on an object, is equal to that object's mass times the acceleration of the object. So this is the relationship that defines for us how an object's acceleration will be impacted by a force. All right, so why was the idea, the emphasis on net force important? Let's take an example. Again, not the best drawer. So here is my apple. And I apply a force in the rightward direction. Let's say that force has a magnitude of 5 newtons. So newton is our unit for force, named after, of course, Isaac Newton. So let's just put that up there real quick. A newton. So this object has a force acting on it of 5 newtons. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to accelerate. It's going to change its motion. There's a force. It has a certain mass, m, and it's going to change its motion in the rightward direction. If it's stationary, it's going to start moving in the rightward direction. If it's already moving in the rightward direction, it's going to get faster. If it is moving in the leftward direction and I apply this force, it's going to get slower. But its motion will change as governed by Newton's second law. So there's a force. There's an acceleration. But what if... That's not the only force acting on the object. What if I have another force acting on the object in that direction? And let's say that force is also 5 newtons. Well, what will the object do? Well, now I have two forces. One's acting to the right. One's acting to the left. They're equal in magnitude. I don't think the object's going to do anything. It's no longer going to change its motion. Is that inconsistent with Newton's second law, which tells us that forces cause change in motions? No. That's why we have to keep it in mind. Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces cause an object's change in motion. So I have to add these forces together. And if I add these forces together, 5 to the right, a positive 5 Newtons, that I want to add... to a negative 5 newtons. Since they're in the same dimension, direction, I can add them together numerically. Remember, we're going to have to deal with this with vectors, but I can add them together numerically. So 5 plus negative 5, well, that, of course, equals 0 newtons. The net force is equal to 0. That's what's important in Newton's second law, that the net force causes a change in motion. You're very intuitive, I, I presume you thought, that when I had two forces that are equal, the object's motion will no longer change. Well, that means there's no force applied. There are forces applied. It means there's no net force. And when I add all the forces together, the net force is what's important. What if I increase the force to the right? Now, instead of them matching, I have a force of 6 newtons to the right. If that was by itself, I'd get a certain acceleration. How will that acceleration look if I add a force of 5 newtons to the left? I'm resisting that amount. Well, we would expect it to be less. Is that consistent with Newton's second law? Well, Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces added together, I have 6 to the right plus 6. And again, I'm looking in a single direction so I can add these numbers. Plus 6 plus a minus 5 newtons. Well, that means that my sum of the forces is 1 newton. Well, if the total force is 1 newton, that's certainly going to be a less significant change than when I just had my 6 newton force. So indeed, the change in motion in this case, as we intuited, would be less. So it's very important that we look at the net force before we start making inferences about how an object's motion will change. And notice I keep saying object's motion will change. Remember, forces cause changes in motion. So let's look back at our example where the two forces were in opposite directions and equal. 
There's no net force. There's no force total that's going to cause an acceleration. What does that tell us about the object? It only tells us the object is not changing its motion. It could be standing still and therefore it stays standing still. Or it could be moving and it's just not changing its motion, which we know to mean it has a constant velocity. So this is the very qualitative conceptual idea of Newton's second law. We're going to give you some practice. I'm going to do some practice problems looking at what happens when we have multiple forces and how will that object's acceleration be affected. Before we do that, I also want you to look at the, the mini lectures on Newton's first law, which we just alluded to, in terms of what does it mean if I have a, non, a net force that is zero. And Newton's third law, which talks about how forces, how objects interact with each other. And then we'll get into that problem solving with forces. Good job.